Hello everyone, welcome back to the latest lecture session. We were uh, just stepping into wastewater treatment and relevant aspects. Rather, we started discussing wastewater treatment and relevant aspects. In that context, we looked at the general variables of uh, importance or uh, relevance to our particular UG course, right? We looked at organics in the context of BOD, COD, suspended solids, nitrogen and phosphorus, nutrients and pathogens. More or less, these are the, uh, what do we say, parameters we want to uh, decrease or are concerned with in the context of wastewater treatment. And obviously, we also want to understand how much is coming in, right? Only then can I design or look at the volume or, uh, you know, estimate how much time the water can or will stay in my particular tank and see if that particular time is good enough or not for the relevant treatment. So, let us uh, move on. So, we started discussing this aspect and we saw that, you know, within the day, there will be variation and depending on external events like rainfall, you will have uh, variation that is typically seasonal variation and you can have steady state flow, but typically in Indian conditions, you will not have that. But within the day, certainly you will have variation and within the season 2, you are going to uh, look at variation. So, to take care of this, you can our people build equalization tanks as in uh, you are letting the flow come in and let us say I am building an equalization tank with a retention time of 10 hours let us say, right. What will that uh, help me let us say or such or how will that help me? It will see to it that with uh, if I am uh, having continuous mixing, if I am having it, uh, the concentration is more or less the same within that equalization tank before it goes to my particular uh, unit process. And please note that these unit process at least in wastewater treatment plant typically include a biological process where the bacteria are going to degrade or oxidize your particular or help in or catalyze oxidation of your waste which is the substrate or food for these microbes now. So, similar to us let us say bacteria do not like uh, shock loads, the term is shock loads or to eat a lot within a shorter period of time or such let us say right. So, typically we are healthy when we sleep well, right? We maintain our uh, what do we say fitness and eat what do we say limited amount uh, and more or less the same amount every day. If you eat a lot within a short period of time or do not eat uh, what do we say for a longer period of time, obviously you are going to be affected. Similarly, let us say I would like to use layman's terms and uh, use that analogy or apply that analogy to the microbes, right? So, you want to avoid uh, shock loads. So, equalization tank will help in that. Other than that, let us say you are dosing a chemical and typically let us say if you do not have accurate uh, flow measurement devices or let us say the concentration of your particular compound that you are going to target, let us say is varying, right? You are going to unnecessarily uh, either underdose or overdose, pardon me, or sometimes even underdose your particular compound. So, to rule out these aspects, let us say and uh, have a better functioning or more effective uh, treatment plant, equalization tank can be built. But again, in India at least sewage treatment plants, people do not go for uh, equalization tanks, but that is another story, right? Here is uh, data from uh, dry weather uh, day, right? So, what do we have here? We are starting at midnight to midnight 24 hour period. As we see, it is peaking around uh, what do we say 10 am or such. This is from relatively recent data, I believe. And again, the reference is given out here, Metcalf and Eddy, right? This is the fifth edition. So, what do we have out here? So, we have an increase in the morning, uh, right, when people go through their uh, daily ablutions and then a decrease during noon and then again another peak during the evening and obviously a considerable decrease during the night, right? So, that is what you see out here. And the average dry weather flow is somewhere out here, it is 106 uh, meter cube per day, let us see, right? So, that is something to keep in mind. And in the previous session, before we ended the session, we were talking about peak factor. That will give us an idea about what do we say the peak, let us say. But the peak is not an instantaneous peak, as in the absolute peak for this day is this particular point. Instantaneous peak flow rate is 187. But I am not really concerned with this, you know, uh, instantaneous peak flow rates. I am concerned about sustained peak flow rates. Let us say, what is the maximum flow that uh, what do we say was maintained for an hour or two hour period. So, let us say the peak hour flow rate as we can see is out here and that we see is I guess people mention that as 183 meter cube per day. 
So, this peak factor typically people use uh, or at least in the developed countries people look at the 2 R uh, maximum right here we have the peak R flow rate. So, 2 R uh, peak flow rate let us say right. So, that is what we are looking at as in sustained for a sustained period what is the uh, flow rate that was uh, held the maximum flow rate that was sustained for a given period of time here the time is for 1 hour. And for example, here for a 13 and a half period 13 and a half hour period the flow sustained flow rate was 125 meter cube per day right for 13 hour uh, or 13 and a half hour uh, period let us say. Obviously, peak flow rate will be lesser when the time frame that we are considering is greater because it is going to or we are going to look at the sustained flow rate. Obviously, we will also look at the minimum. So, the absolute minimum flow rate and the minimum hourly flow rate let us say right. So, how do you take this uh, what do we say variation into uh, consideration when you are designing the treatment plant is of uh, general concern let us say right. So, as I mentioned typically we would like to go for equalization tanks. But in India people do not, but again uh, there are quite a lot of uh, industrial wastewater treatment plants which certainly go for that and some sewage treatment plants too. In general it is always better to get the data if you can, but in India uh, data availability is always an issue. So, people go for the average let us say right. So, that is something to uh, keep in mind. So, one other aspect is if we look at the ratio of peak hourly flow to average flow which will give us an idea about the variation right. So, if I look at uh, what is this, this is 106 and this is 183. So, right it is around 1.8 times higher right the peak hourly flow rate is 1.8 times higher than my uh, average flow rate. But as you can see in for smaller communities right this ratio will be pretty high and for larger communities as you see as in increasing population right population in thousands please the, uh, note that I guess population in thousands here and also again logarithmic scale. So, out here right. So, we see that for 1 million or 10 power 6 population you see that the peak flow rate uh, or the variation is much less because I guess you have a lot of uh, people lot of activities. So, the flows average out in general that is one way to put it right. So, that is something to uh, keep in mind. India at least as of now we are not really capturing what do we say this level of population we are at least certainly out here or relatively uh, or we be are building STPs only for let us say this level of population starting from somewhere around here. As we develop as a country and you know greater uh, what do we say uh, capital available for infrastructure uh, development right say we are going to I guess look at capturing the sewage from these particular uh, communities too. So, that is one thing to keep in mind. And this is the CPHEO manual or I am just referring to it for the first time. So, we have a manual I think it was last updated in 2013 if I am not wrong. It is uh, relatively detailed at least for the Indian context and it will give you an idea about the design, the maintenance, the financial aspects and such uh, with respect to the Indian context. So, that is something that you can always look at. So, in this particular table what do we see? We have the peak factor for contributory population. So, as you see for population between 50,000 to 7.5 lakh right from where we typically or the range above which we typically start building sewage treatment plants in India we see that you know the peak factor is relatively less compared to the case when the population is low. But again in India they are not really looking at what do we say peak hourly uh, flow rate or 2 hour, uh, 2 hour peak flow rates as they do in the relatively developed countries because again we are uh, some way off out here right. Again if we are looking at the bigger uh, what do we say populations you see that the flow averages out and that is what we see out here. So, again well let us just discuss why I need to be concerned about this variation in flow with time. One is obviously the impact on uh, hydraulics let us say if you have what do we say uniform uh, flows your particular hydraulics and the relevant machinery are going to last for uh, not hydraulics the machinery are going to last for longer or you will really need to be uh, varying your uh, what do we say uh, uh, what do we say pump uh, uh, capacity not capacity I guess usage and such depending on the uh, flow rate and such. So, obviously hydraulics plays a role with respect to the machinery. Other aspect is let us say right now I have a tank of this size right and that is designed for the average flow. 
But let's say if I have peak flow and my particular uh, design did not take that into account, let's say, what is going to happen? I am going to have to increase the discharge and if I increase the discharge, what does that mean? My water, waste water is not spending enough time in my reactor and thus obviously the discharge standards or the concentration of the organics in my particular effluent or the discharge are not going to be at the level that I desired, let's say, because they are spending lesser time in the reactor. So, these are the aspects that obviously we need to be uh, concerned about. And another aspect is uh, treatment effectiveness. As in we have typically two uh, major classifications, right, preliminary treatment and secondary treatment. Preliminary treatment we are talking about sedimentation or coagulation and flocculation if used or such, let us say. They depend on gravity, let us say, right. And so, they are not very sensitive to changes in flow because gravity ever present I guess, right or you can easily you know change the dose. So, the their effectiveness is not very much uh, what we see affected or adversely affected by flow or time varied flow. But then you have your biological process in the secondary treatment, right. We talk about secondary treatment where we are looking at removal of the dissolved organics and such let us say by biological process or by the microorganisms. So, obviously as I mentioned they are living what we say uh, things if I may say so, right living uh, what we say right life their life. So, they obviously do not want to experience shocks either with respect to temperature or their food which is our waste. So, obviously you want to look at or minimize shock loading and the other aspect though is that uh, even without an equalization tank if you design your particular uh, let us say biological process in such a way that you know we capture the relevant uh, uh, peaks right because HRT let us say we uh, capture the relevant peaks such that we have for a given outflow or constant outflow or semi constant outflow more or less you are going to be able to handle the flow for that particular uh, what do we say inflow even though the peak factor is around 2. So, that way you can uh, rejig the design without an uh, what do we say uh, equalization tank. So, one aspect is uh, that the flow can affect your treatment effectiveness right. And then let us look at the concentration of the relevant compounds that uh, we are concerned with. Here we have the organics which we are measuring by BOD and suspended solids, right, and then nitrogen content and then phosphorus. So, we have different countries and India is out here. So, we obviously do not have at least these people did not have the data for uh, suspended solids, nitrogen and ammonia and such, right. But at least with respect to BOD, you see that we are relatively lesser compared to most of the uh, what do we say or they are at the lower end let us say right. I guess only Egypt is along with us at least in these countries. So, we see that it depends upon what do we say the level of development let us say uh, is it relatively more developed country or developing country and the kind of food habits obviously will play a role right relatively more uh, what do we say uh, vegetarian or non-vegetarian uh, food intake and such let us see and obviously class or purchasing power obviously is going to affect your particular what we say uh, quantity of waste you are going to give out. So, here we have BOD per in grams per person per capita meaning per person per day. So, you as you see in India we are, are with uh, India Indians I guess are relatively uh, what do we say contributing relatively less waste to the nature. Right. So, that is something to keep in mind, but obviously with increasing industrial industrialization and uh, increasing purchasing power, even our contribution of waste to the nature is increasing now, right. Another aspect is contribution of human waste in grams per capita per day, but now the information is from that CPHEO manual that uh, I uh, mentioned earlier. I would suggest that you look that up. So, per day, but again this is relatively more recent now. So, BOD we uh, are now at 45 to 54, COD around 2 times higher, organic carbon and such let us skip that. Suspended solids 70 to 145 grams per day and ammonia 2 I guess total nitrogen not ammonia total nitrogen 6 to 12 grams per day you can understand the relevant what do we say uh, range or masses that we are giving out per person per day right. And then what else are we typically concerned with? I am concerned with total phosphorus 
and you see out of that inorganic is around uh, what we say 70 percent. Again we are talking about ortho and poly, but please note that typically only ortho is relatively what do we say uh, is relatively more easily used up by the relevant microbes let us say right. And then again we have some information about the amount of uh, microorganisms that are present in uh, sewage let us say right. So, what do we have? We have total bacteria right remarkably high, coliforms, fecal, streptococci, salmonella and so on and so forth. In this context I should mention one aspect which I seem to have missed uh, earlier when we were talking about uh, pathogens. As in I, when I was talking about pathogens I mentioned what is it prokaryotes, eukaryotes and the major differences between them. But you know uh, what is it or how am I going to measure them let us say. I cannot measure each of these kinds of uh, bacteria or the pathogens right. There are a lot of pathogens out there how can I measure everything now right that is not going to be economically feasible. So, obviously what do I do I am going to look at an indicator organism right and what is it that this indicator organism should be able to indicate obviously it needs to indicate the presence of pathogens. So, this indicator organism should always be present when the pathogen is present let us say yes that is one aspect and the ratio of the concentration of this indicator organism to the concentration of this pathogen should always be relatively uh, constant right. So, that I get an idea about the actual pathogen based on this indicator organism and also this indicator organism should be tough and sturdy it should persist in the natural environment right it should not be too fragile to uh, say so right and then it should be easily measurable. So, for that we look at coliforms right as an indicator. So, total coliforms for wastewater that is the uh, way we measure it with respect to pathogens. Fecal coliform right fecal coliform we use when we are talking about uh, I guess uh, drinking water right or I think it is the other way around right. So, we are going to typically look at total coliform and uh, what is it now fecal coliform right. Again these are indicator organisms we have different ways to uh, measure them let us say right and let us uh, move on. So, the amount of waste water obviously depends on how much water the family or the person is consuming. So, obviously it depends again on the location the what do we say purchasing power of the relevant community and such uh, relatively smaller communities, but those with the house service connection 7 to 100 liters per day and typically 85 percent of the waste is. I mean uh, water consumption is what we presume to be the waste water that is going to be discharged from that particular house and relatively higher population with full flushing let us say right. We see that it is relatively higher again flushing as we saw in one of the earlier slides you know takes up I think almost 40 percent at least uh, 40 percent of the waste water generated or contributes to 40 percent of the generated waste water in developed countries and I believe that is where we will also lead to or end up. I guess if we do not take uh, different uh, conservation measures or end up adopting relatively more uh, what we say efficient flushing systems. So, communities with population above 100 k with uh, flushing system. So, again this is the range and from here you can get an idea about the amount of waste water per person per day let us see. And then we have the masses that we are generating per day and from that you can get the relevant concentration. So, just for comparison we have this we have low strength, medium strength and high strength uh, what do we say uh, waste water I guess this is sewage treatment or sewage part me not sewage treatment. So, total dissolved solids I am just going to look at medium strength for now 560 fixed and volatile right that gives you an idea, idea about the relatively inert and more and the organic content this is within the dissolved uh, solids let us see right. And even within the uh, what do we say uh, suspended solids you will have some organic content that is obviously seen from here. So, fixed is 43 and here we have uh, what is this uh, organic content that is suspended right and here is the organic content that is dissolved let us see right and settleable solids which is seems to be relatively uh, less again units are milliliter per liter I guess ok and all the other units are mostly milligram per liter. And BOD we see it is around 200 typically in India 150 or such then COD is 500 again uh, relatively higher for uh, Indian scenario yes 300 or so 
in India and nitrogen ranges from 20 to 30 right and of that typically nitrates relatively lesser because uh, you know you need oxygen for them to be formed and obviously as you can see organic content or organically bound nitrogen and uh, free ammonia are neck to neck more or less the same right. Phosphorus you see organic which is relatively difficult to degrade and inorganic I guess this differs from the data that was given out by CPHEO for Indian conditions anyway right. There they mentioned that the inorganic phosphorus was relatively higher almost 70 percent if you remember. And then uh, relevant uh, what do we say other uh, parameters of interest and then here we have the total coliform and fecal coliform. So, we have uh, considerable what do we say uh, concentrations of this uh, coliforms and different cysts let us say right. Again considerable numbers per uh, what do we say 100 ml sample right considerable numbers per 100 and sample. So, more or less in India at least it is 150 again this is the not 150 uh, 150 milligram per liter BOD and COD typically twice or two and a half times. But for IIT Roorkee which I believe I have this okay for IIT Roorkee let us say given and taken in 2019 after the sewerage network was more or less built right what do you have let us look at the typical value. So, pH fine. BOD obviously on the higher side, COD2 on the higher side again depends on the what do we say type of uh, what do we say uh, usage too. So, it is not just uh, residential community you have considerable numbers of uh, what we say amount of research going on and the relevant compounds that probably should not be dumped into the sewage are being dumped. But again that is something we are taking care of uh, this year let us say right. So, suspended solids, dissolved solids, but at that time there was a rainfall event that is why this uh, so what do we say uh, there was considerable not rainfall event there was another issue for this dissolved solids ok. And then nitrogen uh, relatively lesser right maybe because of uh, vegetarian community probably, but nitrates are relatively higher for some reason could be due to uh, what do we say compounds being discharged directly and then phosphorus right and then fecal and such coliform. And these are the guidelines as an uh, after uh, treatment to what level should they be brought down these are the latest guidelines ok. And as you can see BOD has to come to less than 10 and that is a considerable ask ok. And uh, COD also has to come to less than 50 milligram per liter BOD and COD. Right and fecal 2 or uh, coliform 2 as you can see from 10 power 5 a uh, 3 order magnitude uh, decrease to less than 10 power 2 right. So, that is something to keep in mind considerable decrease and though they do not specify about ok they are now also talking about biological or nutrient removal which was not specified earlier let us see. So, nitrogen and phosphorus 2 you have to remove right. So, we are concerned about organic content removal we are concerned about nutrient removal and we are also concerned about the pathogens. And while we take care of this obviously, the TDS and TSS will be taken care of let us say right while we take care of these aspects right. Let us move on. So, one aspect is uh, concentration, but obviously we are concerned with uh, masses right it is not just concentration, concentration is mass per volume right. So, I need to look at the mass not just mass per volume. So, I need to look at the flow rate flow is how much water is coming in per time right. So, with that I will get mass per time let us say right. So, that is this I guess uh, BOD mass loading mass per time. So, that is the graph we are typically more uh, concerned with, but for general sewage you see that the trends are relatively uh, similar with respect to flow rate concentration and the BOD mass loading right. So, that is something to keep in mind. So, the general standards for discharge again the relevant uh, schedule and the environmental protection rules first came about in 1986 I guess. And here we have uh, national river conservation direct rate guidelines, but we will look at that later ok. So, earlier as I uh, was mentioning where do I have BOD ok suspended solids and such. Obviously, when they are talking about suspended solids that is why they are as I mentioned you need to give the relevant filter size. So, that is why they mentioned the filter size. So, pHs and such is fine. So, nitrogen a remarkably higher uh, value, but that is considering the total Keldal nitrogen let us say right. Here earlier BOD was 30 
uh, now as I mentioned it is uh, the discharge standard is 30 not 30 10 and COD is 50 milligram per liter not 250 but earlier as you see it was relatively higher and then you have concentrations of different heavy metals but in general in uh, sewage or uh, domestic sewage if there are no industrial what do we say sources typically you will not get heavy metals. But in India, let us say you have commercial enterprises and uh, what do we say houses in close proximity and we do not have separate networks. So, depending on the community and type of work they are engaged in, sometimes heavy metals might be high and then you will have to look at it because heavy metals at high concentrations are not just toxic to humans, they are also toxic to microbes. But obviously, their threshold is relatively higher if especially you can design the relevant uh, primary treatment process let us say. So, that is something to keep in mind right BOD, COD and then I guess we have different what do we say standards for fecal coliform and such. And one aspect I guess I should have mentioned earlier too is that there are different standards for discharging into inland surface water like river or let us say lake and for discharging into public sewers, discharging into land for irrigation or into coastal areas. But in general, this is not practiced, okay. And I know that people say that you can use it for irrigation, but the issue is even with BOD of 10 milligram per liter, COD of 50 milligram per liter, you have what we call uh, as or refer to as these emerging contaminants which are re remarkably persistent in nature. So, what happens? They come from our waste and if we use that for our uh, what do we say irrigation, they enter the food chain now right, even at levels of BOD of 10 and such. And that is why I certainly would not recommend it and sometimes people did try this as in using land for irrigation and the concentration of this persistent organics or even heavy metals in your food grains or your pulses increase considerably. So, again that is something that should be looked at in totality right, uh, discharge into public sewers does not really work in India. In some areas, marine coastal area discharge, yes, we do have that, but as you see the concentrations allowable for discharging into these three particular, what do we say, outlets, I guess, is higher. But again, typically we are always concerned with uh, discharge into inland surface water bodies, right. So, that is something to keep in mind. But as I mentioned recently, uh, people have been obviously looking at uh, what do we say are uh, resources, uh, what do we say as, uh, what do we say not as limitless, but as something that has a finite uh, limit and something that we should pay attention to. Earlier with uh, relatively low levels of population and industrialization that was not an issue, but now we are understanding the uh, importance of our resources primarily let us say water and air. So, obviously, as you see we have the national river conservation uh, what do we say uh, aspects that we discussed about earlier discharge guidelines again by ministry of environment and forests so what do we have so we will just look at the primary aspects instead of bod of 30 though i mentioned it 20 so it's now people are pushing for 10 and suspended solids instead of uh, what is this 50 we are looking at 30 and one aspect with respect to suspended uh, solids is that at least in the effluent Okay, effluent when you measure the suspended solids, you see that it is in close proximity or you know rather not close proximity correlates very well with the BOD, right. So, that is why if you measure the suspended solids in your wastewater, that is typical not wastewater, I guess the treated effluent wastewater, right, treated effluent from a sewage treatment plant that typically gives you some idea about your uh, BOD, right. So, that is re one reason obviously why you can look at suspended solids in the treated effluent. But one other uh, disadvantage in just looking at suspended solids is that suspended solids can be inert that have no effect on marine or coastal life or your uh, river let us say right. So, obviously, you can uh, it is a balancing uh, game out there right. So, that is one aspect to keep in mind. So, fecal coliforms earlier I guess and now in uh, I believe they were asking for much lower value we will look at that. But obviously, there is always a rider or it could be lower depending upon the capacity of the effluent receiving water body. So, different uh, what do we say states let us say Jammu and Kashmir, Punjab right or such have different uh, standards or relatively more uh, stringent standards. But if uh, always it is the issue about or the issue is about enforcement, how do you enforce. So, again CPHEO guidelines as I mentioned MOEF standards yes 
and then we have the recommended values which are what people are uh, pushing for right now let us say right. So, recommended guidelines for treated sewage if it is being discharged into surface water being used as a source of drinking water, but in India more or less every surface water body is used as a source of drinking water right. I believe I have the more uh, what do we say recent guidelines, but before we go further as I mentioned we have Delhi out here, Matra, Agra, Etawa again huge huge uh, what do we say levels of population and Yamuna flowing. So, this person's sewage after replenishment is going to be this person's drinking water or you know water for different purposes. Soon though we would not have enough water, so the, we are going to end up at the case at least maybe 100 years down the line. Again they are already doing it in some developed countries at least in South Africa where they had no water right. You are uh, treating it to a great extent uh, such that it can be more or less used as drinking water waste water you treat it to such an extent that it can be used as drinking water. People have a mental block, but you know it is just about compounds A, B, C and D and parameters X, Y, Z and if you are able to bring them down or remove them they are uh, as good as or better than most of the drinking water that is available out there. So, here though we are not at, at that stage people in India are nowhere near uh, what do we say being acceptable to or being ready to accept what do we say recycled wastewater for drinking, but here we have it for different reuse as in for toilet flushing you do not hear remarkably treated water for fire protection, vehicle washing and so on and so forth let us say crops which are crops which are eaten raw and cooked, but I mentioned the issues out here. At least in India we can go for toilet flushing because that takes up a lot of volume of water right. And uh, the issue here is that though you have to have a separate plumbing network which is what we do not have as of now. So, again different standards are given for this. So, this is the next step I would say in trying to what do we say minimize our uh, footprint and see to it that the water resources which are finite can be reused by us right. So, let us move on. So, this is what I wanted to mention. So, these are the standards for the new sewage treatment plants those that are designed after the relevant notification date. As we see BOD standards are 10, COD is 50, suspended solids 10, fecal conform less than 230 and nitrogen and phosphorus 10 and 2 right. Slowly but surely we are uh, pressing for rel relatively low values, but the issue here is that let me see if I have space out here ok. So, you know that it is a CSTR typically mostly CSTR right or even if it is a SBR it is a batch reactor. So, what do we know whatever is coming in right ok I should not have mentioned SBR in the same breath, but if it is a CSTR as in flow is continuous and flow is continuously going out and if you want to have 10 or less than 10 this has to be operated right such that the most of it is less than 10 milligram per liter. Why is that CSTR right whatever is in the what do we say uh, tank or the reactor is what will go out. So, for that you have to have higher HRTs or hydraulic retention times or such, but as we discussed earlier uh, the CSTR is not really an ideal CSTR you do not have instantaneous uh, what do we say uh, dilution, but obviously if you are trying to uh, build a what do we say reactor going for a plug flow reactor is certainly better because the kinetics are going to be relatively higher R net for the particular volume as you can see r equal to kc and the lower I want to achieve the rate here is going to be very very less right. This concentration if it is low rate is also low rate of removal right. So, that is an issue that you have out here with the continuous flow systems, but obviously with SBR which is a batch reactor or more or less variation of plug flow if you want to think of it that way or with well designed uh, what do we say reactors that are more or less or you know are uh, similar to plug flow reactors you can achieve good removal rates, but with conventional what do we say process which are already built or conventional sewage treatment plants getting to 10 is going to be remarkably difficult right. So, one aspect to keep in mind is that in this course we are looking at sewage treatment plants right or treatment plants for domestic sewage right sewage from houses and such, but obviously you have industrial wastewaters and such. I just wanted to give an example about this as in general characteristics of oil refinery wastewater. So, what is it 
oil obviously is remarkably high emulsified oil hydrogen sulfide is high right again these what I am trying to mention here is that there is no one size fit, fits all but in India again lack of knowledge I guess but that is what we are trying to address out here by disseminating the relevant knowledge hopefully right we uh, use one size fits all approach right so that is not going to work out as you can see you have different challenges out here so you have to modify your sewage treatment plant accordingly right again chromate and such or chromium so different aspects and then obviously I guess for coal mines and such you have different uh, discharge standards and such right so one aspect is it is not just the industries you have the different uh, mining activities that lead to considerable pollution so again that is a grey area now we are still uh, yet to what do we say put in more efforts into those uh, what do we say polluting sources but again we do have the relevant laws but enforcement and will is the issue out here right but again in this course we are looking at domestic sewage so i am done with discussing quantity and quality we are now going to start looking at the crux of the issue the treatment plants let's say but uh, looks like i'm out of time so uh, thanking you for your patience i will end today's session Thank you.